Okay, uh, good evening, Professor David J. De Los Reyes. It's uh, August 28, 2023. The, no, 27, the, oh, 29. The time is uh, 2.40 a.m. It's August 29. Okay, my topic for this session will be alternating current circuit. And this, this is one of the most interesting topics under alternating current circuit. It is the so-called loop equations by using Kurt Chap's laws of uh, voltages. Okay, uh, let's proceed. The subject matter for tonight will be <coughs> Alternating current circuit, lesson number 33, and this will now be loop equations. Okay. Uh, we are done with the Tepenin's theorem, Norton's theorem, the so-called superposition theorem, and uh, Nodal's theorem. So this will now be the paper type of solution. For solving currents in alternating current circuits or uh, direct current circuits. For direct current circuits, it is much more easier because uh, the operation is just uh, real to real. Under alternating current, uh, we must have to use complex numbers. Okay, uh, let's proceed. Subject matter for tonight, uh, alternate, alternating current circuit, lesson number 33, and this will be loop equations. Uh, loop equations meaning uh, we are given a loop and uh, maybe the problem is asking what will be the currents uh, passing through that component. Okay, okay, let's try to bring out the particular this application of this one. For loop equations, it could either be that the voltage source is a single source or multi sources. Uh, there are circuits in which uh, the voltage source is just only one. If I will cover the second one. Okay. So this loop equation solution is still valid. But if the voltage sources may be two, just like this example here. Uh, this loop equation solution is still valid. Okay. That's why I place it there. The loop equation solution for currents are either uh, used for single source or multi sources. Okay, uh, let's try to bring out the procedure and how to compute for the current uh, passing through a circuit component, uh, like this one V, what will be the current passing through CL, if we are given these specifications, and the solution is by using loop equations. Okay, uh, let's try to bring out the procedure. I will try to read the procedure and um, make representation of the currents in any closed loop. Uh, the meaning of this, just to illustrate uh, procedure number one. If we are given a circuit, <coughs> uh, make representation for the currents. So, if I will see that uh, the current circulating in this loop is I1, and the current circulating in this loop is I2. So I will now be making a representation of I1 equal to and I2 equal to. That's why I place it here. Make representation of the currents in any closed loop. It is either I1 or I2 for this given example. Because it is possible that the number of loops is just only two. At least uh, the max, the least is actually two because if it's only one, okay, uh, we can solve immediately the problem by using a direct uh, solution. But uh, at least there are two for it to be complicated to fall under loop equations. Well, that's uh, procedure number one. Make representation of the unknown currents. The unknown current is a uh, current I1, okay, considering I1 loop. And current I2, considering the second loop, uh, this one here, the, the one that goes around here. This is I1 loop, this is I2 loop, so make a representation. 
So the current passing through I1 loop will be I1, and the current circulating on this loop will be I2, and that's procedure number one. Okay? Number two, by taking the summation of the voltages considering its slope at a time, find the relation of the currents. <coughs> oh, I place it here. Sigma notation. <coughs> uh, sigma notation. Capital letter B and B should be equal to zero. Okay? Uh, put the direction of your tracing. If this is the direction of the tracing, uh, then the, the standard procedure is that uh, the one that goes with the tracing, tracing will be plus. So meaning to say under procedure number two, take the summation of voltages considering its slope. Okay? Because by taking the summation of voltages considering its slope, we could produce two equations for this example uh, involving I1 and I2. Because uh, for the meantime, the only, the, the only unknown is actually I1 and I2. The current circulating in this uh, loop number 1 and the current circulating in this loop number 2. Because to solve for I1 and I2, we must have to produce two equations involving two unknowns and those unknowns are I1 and I2. So if the problem is asking for uh, ISO 2, we must have to compute for ISO 2, but we must have to produce uh, two equations to solve uh, the unknowns. Okay, that's procedure number two. Okay, taking the summation of the voltages equal to zero. What will be the last procedure? Solve the equation simultaneously to solve for the currents. So meaning to say, if we are given I1 plus I2 equal to, we call that equation number one, and another equation maybe involving I1 plus, uh, there should be coefficients over here, right? Okay. This is A2, B2, I2 equal to C2, and this will be equation number two, meaning to say, after taking the summation of the voltages, considering its slope, for the first loop, we could produce a first equation. For the second loop, we could produce another equation involving I1 and I2. And according to procedure number three, to solve for the unknowns, solve these two equations simultaneously. Okay, so using your knowledge of algebra, two equations into unknowns, okay, uh, we can produce a solu many solutions by substitution, by addition or subtraction, but the so-called addition or subtraction under complex number will be a complicated thing, right? Because uh, we, don't, we don't only have uh, real parts, we got imaginary parts. So to make a solution, uh, what do you call this, uh, addition by subtraction or, or ad addition by subtraction or addition, subtract, addition by or sub Elimination by subtraction or addition, it's hard to eliminate the other one because it got an angle, right? So the proper way to solve this one is actually by substitution. But the more accurate way is the, the one that we, we will be using the so-called uh, determinants or Kramer's rule. Okay? So if we are given two equations to unknowns, it's up to you on what solution you will be presenting. Uh, elimination by substitution. The addition or subtraction, uh, we cannot, uh, it's hard to do that one. Or the next one will be by using determinants. Oh, that's procedure number three. Okay, uh, let's try to discuss the concept considering a figure. If this is source number one, source number two, we got C1, C2, we got CL. Supposing this will be the given examples. Uh, we are given Z1, internal impedance of generator number 1. We are given C2, internal impedance for uh, generator number 2. We are given their voltages, 250 angle 0, 240 angle 15 degrees. Uh, we are given, uh, there's a load across the terminals. But of course, the connection is parallel. And the value of the... Impedance is 12 plus G8, meaning it got a resistance of 12 ohms and then got inductive reactance of 8 ohms. 
The problem is just asking for the current passing through isobel equal to. The current passing here. Okay, the problem is asking what will be the current passing here with these two given voltage sources and in, in, in internal impedances, okay, by using loop equations. <laughs> okay, by using loop equations, because actually we can solve this problem by using Thevenin's uh, theorem, Norton's theorem, superposition theorem, or Nodal's theorem, but this time, the solution should be by using loop equation. Okay, uh, let's try to... Uh, we will not solve the problem completely. We, we might continue on the next lesson, but uh, I will just bring up the solution so you could visualize the procedures I'm, I'm being mentioned over here. Okay? Uh, according to procedure number one, make representation for the currents. So, the current uh, on the first loop is I1. The current in the second loop is I2. Okay, uh, we got the representation already, right? So what will be the next step? Take the summation of the voltages considering its loop. Okay, so considering I1 loop, this, this loop here. Take the summation of the voltages. Voltage sources will be positive. Voltage drops will be negative. Voltage sources which is against the loop of the uh, what they call this uh, commanding uh, generator will be negative. So if we try to take the summation of the voltages here, this is a voltage source, right? So that's plus E1. Just be careful with this because uh, one wrong side, uh, your solution will, will be all wrong. Uh, consider it. If this loop here is positive, uh, clockwise is positive. Right? But considering ito, the polarity of ito with respect to A1 is uh, different, right? So, considering I1 loop, instead of this one to be a voltage source, considering I1 loop, it should have a negative uh, configuration. So, this is minus ito. It fights E1, right? It fights E1. Ito is not a voltage drop, but the mere fact that it contradicts the loop, okay, it should be negative. Uh, the voltage drop across uh, Z1, or the voltage across Z1, of course, it's a voltage drop. So, this is minus I1, okay, and the current being passed by I1, there are two impedances in which this I1 uh, one passes by. Because this is I1, right? It passes through C1 and it passes through C2. So to take the voltage drop here, press the voltage drop here, due to I1, considering this slope. So it will be negative I1 times the sum of C1 plus C2. Okay? Uh, we are done with the current I1, right? But considering the first slope, this I2 here got an effect on Z2, right? Right? So this one will now be a plus okay times c2 the voltage across this due to i2 will be i2 z2 you got it and this should be equal to zero so considering i1 loop there are actually uh, four voltages this uh, voltage e1 here this voltage e2 but since the polarity of E2, it fights E1, so it's negative. Plus the voltage drop across C1 and C2, considering I1. Okay, that's it. And the voltage drop across this, due to I1, will be the product I1 times C2. So, no, no, I2 times C2. So this is I2 times C2. So rearranging this one after taking the summation of the voltages, uh, we put this one on the right, then we try to rearrange, okay? We put this one on the right, so this will not be plus, right? This one, we put it on the right also, so this will not be negative, minus I2, C2. Uh, this one, E1 and E2, they remain on the left, but uh, we interchange the location, right? So this will now be E1 minus E2, and this will be equation number one. You got it, guys? Am, am I still on camera? Right? 
that's uh, <laughs> uh, just be careful with this side because one wrong side and the resolution will be wrong a1 should be the positive voltage and a2 should be a negative voltage because uh, e2 contradicts this one considering this load right and this is a voltage drop and a voltage drop okay but uh, i2 here considering uh, z2 it seems it's not a voltage drop because uh, the one that goes with the loop is a negative current, but this current here is against the loop, the, the loop of I1, so this is plus. Okay? Oh, let's consider I2 loop. Take again the summation of the voltages and this should be equal to zero. Take the summation of the voltages considering I2. So the positive voltage source now will be plus E2. It's plus because uh, considering the right loop, this is our voltage source, right? Uh, this one got no effect because uh, we are just considering uh, this at uh, the right hand loop for the time. And the current that goes with the loop is actually I2, right? So it should be a negative I2. And what are the impedances in which this I2 passes? Z2 and Cl. Right? C2 and CL. Okay? Uh, this is a... Th this is the direction of the current. But considering I1, it also has effect on this loop, right? And the current is uh, downward. Downward. The negative current is uh, clockwise, right? But this one, it is downward. It is against this. So the next thing is will be plus... I1 times C2 and this should be equal to 0 the negative current is the current that goes with the loop and any current that contradicts that loop it should be a positive current that's why this is plus ok so rearranging this one uh, we will maintain this one as positive so we put this one on the left then we rearrange it so it will now be negative I1 C2 this one we put it on the right so it will now be plus right because we maintain A2 to be plus so this one goes to uh, this I1 goes to the right should be, should be negative this one goes to the right so it will now be positive this one maintains on the left but uh, we interchange location with it so this is E2 and this should be equal to equation number 2 Okay, so after taking the summation of the voltages considering I1 loop and I2 loop, okay, we produce two equations, okay, two unknowns. Because uh, I1 is unknown, I2 is unknown, we are given C1, we are given C2, we are given C2, and we are given E1 and E2. So the only unknown for equation number one is I1 and I2. But the problem is, the operation should be complex operation. Complex numbers. Okay? That's why direct current circuit is much more easier in the calculation. Okay? Than with alternating current circuit. Because in under, under alternating current circuit, the operation is complex operation. Uh, considering equation number two. Uh, I1 is unknown. C2 is given. I2 is unknown. C2 given. CL given. E2 is given. So, I1 and I2 for equation number 1. I1 and I2 considering equation number 2. And according to procedure number 3, solve the equation simultaneously. That's why I told you a while ago, you can use, uh, since there are only two unknowns, you can use uh, elimination by substitution. But the elimination by subtraction or addition, okay, it's hard to do because uh, when you subtract, you're subtracting a real and imaginary and for them to be equal, it's hard to make it the same, right? So the best solution for this one is by using determinants. So I will rewrite equation number one. Uh, I, I will represent the coefficient of I1 to be A1, coefficient of I2 here to be B1, and the pure constant on the right for equation number one will be C1, okay? For equation number 2, uh, I will represent the coefficient of uh, I sub 1 to be E sub 2, coefficient of I sub 2 to be B sub 2, 
and the right hand side of equation number 2 will be 0. So by using determinants, if we try to compute for I1, okay, uh, take this value here, put it there, right? So the determinant of I1 will be uh, this one, we put it here, right? So it will become C1, C2, okay, B1, B2, it's B1, B2. And the denominator will just be simply A1, B1, and A2, B2. A1, B1, A2, B2. And to simplify this one, uh, we have done Kramer's law under algebra, determinants, matrix. So it should be the product of the lower minus the product of the upper, okay. I will not show you this time, but uh, the next time around, I, I will show you the complete solution of this one. I'm just uh, discussing the concepts on how to attack this one by using the block equations uh, procedure. And the determinant of I2, if we try to compute for I2, uh, take this C1 here, put it on the second, second row, right? Not on the first one. So the coefficient of the I2 now will be E1, E2, this is E1, E2, plus uh, this one, C1, C2, C1, C2. And the bottom portion, it's still the same as for I1. That is E1, B1, E2, B2. So it's just a matter of uh, so, uh, what you call this, uh, simplifying this one by using your knowledge of complex numbers. So take it easy. Give us one wrong sign, your solution will, will be all wrong. Okay, so actually we can compute for I, I1 now if we try to simplify this, but it should be by complex operation. Okay, we could solve for this one. I2, we could compute also. And the problem is asking for what's the unknown on the problem? I1, I2 plus IL. But if you try to inspect the I1 loop, uh, this I1 is the, same, uh, is the same as the current passing through CL. So actually, I sub L is actually the same as I sub 1. So I place it here. I sub 2 is actually equal to I sub L. So we are now given a current, current number 1, current number 2, and current I sub L. Okay, uh, that's the solution. Uh, I will not uh, give you the exact... Uh, uh, numbers uh, the next time around we will calculate this one because we will be bringing out the currents okay then as you check let's uh, uh, get back to one of the previous solutions either Tibbins or Norton's or so procedure then we will try to bring out the current if it is it's still the same as the current uh, that came out using the loop equations okay that's it guys so for those of you who are taking up electrical engineering, this is for you guys. If you want to subscribe to my channel, my channel is at youtube.com slash at propdvjdvsvs. If you want to share it, please click share. Uh, good morning from Los Angeles. Okay, August 29, 2023. Good morning.